Hello everybody. I was up till 4 a.m. last night. I just, I couldn't sleep. <laughs> and while I was there lying in bed thinking, I had this idea for a video that I thought would be really fun and I just decided to do it today. I am going to give you recommendations based on a tarot card reading. I am going to do a little spread. I'm going to give you three cards to choose from. You choose a card, whatever card that is, that is calling to you. And then I'm going to recommend a book based on what those cards mean. If you guys enjoy this, I definitely am down to do it again because I've had a lot of fun making this video so far. So if you guys enjoy it also, I would love to do it again. I guess I should mention the deck that I'm using. Um, when I was, this is my first and only tarot card deck. I was looking to buy one a couple of years ago and I, I don't know, I was looking for one that called to me and I thought was beautiful and I found this one. It's called the Fountain Tarot. It's very shiny. <laughs> um, and the cards look like this on the front and they're super shiny on the sides and I just, just really love it. Um, so yeah, if you want it, I will link it down below. So let's get started. Uh, I started by shuffling the deck, just refreshing it, seeing where we were gonna land, spreading it out. Um, so I'm really bad at spreading the cards out. I think it's cause they're not well worn yet and I need, I'm so delicate with them. I need to wear them in a bit more. So yeah, eventually I spread them out and then I just picked three that I, I don't know, I just, this is one of my favorite parts of the whole process of tarot is just the randomness and the feeling of also non-randomness that goes with picking out the cards for the spread. So I picked out these three cards. I don't know why, here they are, and this is what we're working with today. Um, definitely taking into account the moment that we're in. Most of us are staying home. We're in stressful, difficult times. I kind of felt like maybe the cards would show that. Um, so pick one of these three cards, whichever one is calling to you, whichever one you're feeling, first, second, or third. Um, it's not necessarily first, middle, last, but you can think of it that way if you want. Just pick one. Okay. And now I'm going to recommend a book based on each card that I flipped. And um, yeah, this is fun. <laughs> okay, the first card that we're starting with is The Emperor. Um, this is a cool one because I've never seen it before, actually. I've never pulled The Emperor before. It's a very strong looking card and the colors are really bold. Most of the colors in this deck are quite silvery. So um, whenever I pull a darker card, it's very like striking. Even though I'm starting to get to know the cards pretty well at this point, I still love to read what is in the little booklet, the guidebook that it came with because it fills my head with the right tone. <laughs> so the main phrase that it has is structured control. It says, a symbol of fatherly authority, the emperor stands powerfully on his earthly foundation, manipulating an airy cube above him. With his head in the center, he uses his intelligence to create order and structure of his surroundings. Grand achievements are not built overnight. They require a mature coordination of foresight, planning, and bold fearlessness. The emperor declares that now is the time for exerting control over the situation, defining limits, and showing confidence in one's ability. And meaning words are structure from chaos, self-awareness, control, and coordination. So I think that this is a really cr a cool card. I mean, I always think they're cool cards. I guess that would be really redundant to say about every card, but I think this is an interesting one because we are in a time of absolutely having no control and very little structure. We've lost our structure because we're all staying at home or if we're still, if we're essential workers or our jobs are requiring that we continue working, there's still an air of it being different, of it being stressful. And you know, your nightly routines, if you're still going to work, your nightly routines are very different. You're not going out. So it is just a very time of losing structure. And I thought to get a card that is asking for structure is really interesting. And so when I picked a book, I picked On Writing by Stephen King. This, was, this book actually came to my mind for this right away. Like I, I flipped it and I started reading about structure and I was like, On Writing by Stephen King, it has to be that one. And I think it's for two reasons. The first is that this book is about literally like book structure. Um, not it, in no way is it 
kind of academic or dense or boring or sort of like, all right, so first you have act one. Act one should be broken into three parts. The inciting incident. No, it's not like that kind of rigid structured talk, but it is about like, how is a book written? What are the forums and the sections and the ideas and et cetera's that you should be having in a book when you're writing a book, if you're wanting to write a book. So it does talk about actual novel structure. But then secondly, it's kind of about someone who spends their life building structures, right? Stephen King, this is his memoir. It's a memoir about writing, but we also learn about Stephen King's life and how he writes and how he works. And you get to see someone, who, I, I mean, I just find it fascinating to see an artist's routine and their structure of how they, they build up their day. So looking at this, but also, Back to the booklet, it said what I thought was really interesting, grand achievements are not built overnight. I think right now I'm feeling really trapped <laughs> and I'm feeling really like, oh God, I wish I could be out there achieving my dreams. But this is a time of calm and well, in, in a certain way, a time of staying home and thinking. And I can really get bogged down and thinking like, I'm not accomplishing enough right now. And other people like Stephen King are out there doing, like publishing all of these books and doing their dreams and I'm not. But if you read this book and you read any book about an, uh, about a, an artist, you, you obviously realize that these things didn't happen overnight. They took lots of time and also their lives are not as straightforward and clear as we think they are, right? Stephen King didn't just like hit age, like graduate, like go to college, graduate college, you turn 24, you publish your first book. Every two years you publish a book and your life is on track. No, he had like a very crazy life and things that happened to him that I couldn't like believe. So definitely recommend this book. It's one of my favorite books. Actually, all of the books I'm recommending are some of my favorites. So that is our first book. So the next card we pulled is Three of Swords. I'm... I love this card. I really connect with the swords of all of the, the is it suits? It's not suits. <laughs> of all the types of cards, the swords are the ones that I pull the most often. Um, my favorite card and the one that I've probably pulled the most often is the 10 of swords. But today we pulled the three of swords. So let's look at what that means. So three of swords, the phrase that goes with it is a shattered heart. In its cold and stormy environment, the Three of Swords indicates that you are taking your first tentative steps into a particular area of life and your young heart is about to be abruptly broken. A piercing truth or occurrence is imminent and your life will not be the same once it has happened. It will hurt, but in retrospect, you saw it coming and if you're really being honest, it's accompanied by a sense of relief. Though it's little consolation in the moment, it's times like these that bring us our most profound growth. Meaning words, a painful truth revealed, a separation or a loss. So I love this. This is why I love the sword cards. They're kind of about like change and just like things revealing themselves, I guess. But the three of swords, I think, again, I'm looking at these cards with the lens of the moment we're in. But I think of how at the end of this quarantine, at the end of this pandemic, whatever that end looks like, it doesn't feel like we're gonna be the same. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't, to me at least, I feel like I want to live my life to the fullest and really embrace the things that I care about. And I'm learning so many things about, like, I don't know if you've noticed in those clips that the edges of my nails are all covered in dirt. <laughs> And it's because I've been out gardening all day and I've loved it. And I haven't done that in years. And it's just because I finally have given myself the opportunity to like take care of myself and go out and spend time in the sun. So it just, it is, um, it is scary. And like this card said, there is going to be probably pain with it and it's going to be difficult, but it's going to be kind of a snap moment or a, a breaking off and realizing that you have moved into something new. So this, I was trying to think of from a bunch of different angles. I was like, that could be a book that revolves around a breakup. It could be about a book that like where someone right at the beginning moves somewhere new and is like, like breaking into a new life. But the book that I ended up landing on is Tiny Beautiful Things by Cheryl Strayed, an unfortunate cover 
but a book that I love. So this book, oh, this book. Cheryl Strayed wrote Wild. I recently mentioned this book in a video, I think, but Cheryl Strayed wrote Wild. I haven't read Wild, but I've seen the movie. It was great. But she also wrote this column called Dear Sugar. She was sugar and people would write her their problems. Dear Sugar, I'm thinking about leaving my husband. Dear Sugar, my friends were talking about me behind my back. Dear Sugar, I want to be a writer, but I feel like I can't, etc. Those sorts of problems. But it is such a powerful read because honestly it is about constantly having these shattering moments right these moments of like realizing that you do not want to continue living in the way that you are living whether those are small things or big things changing up a routine or breaking up a marriage like realizing that something has to change and it's painful but it has to happen letters after letters of that happening. And it's so beautiful to see that you are not the only person that needs change, that other people feel trapped and stuck and are struggling, but are right on the edge of being brave and making that big decision. And then Cheryl Stray just gives you, as sugar, gives you this beautiful advice. She's so compassionate. She's so empathetic. She's so kind and just completely generous with her advice and sometimes she's angry but in like a really in a way that I think is really great <laughs> like sometimes she's like very brutal and direct and forward and like this is what you need to do to get out of this kind of thinking or this situation it is beautiful and she's also lived such a crazy life so her advice often reveals a lot about her and about her the way that she has lived her life and it's just beautiful it's so good and then the third card I pulled was Five of Swords. So another sword card, but also they, these are all kind of, you know, darker cards. There are loads of cards in the deck that are about like, you are in a moment of joy and you, <laughs> you, you're currently having a, the time of your life or this is a period of rest, stuff like that. But these are all kind of stressful cards and I think that reflects perfectly for the times. But yes, Five of Swords. So the phrase is Tainted Victory. In the Five of Swords, two glum figures stand in the background defeated while the victor balances tenuously on his spoils. The smirk on his face reveals a prideful lack of humility, while the distance between him and the others highlights the alienation he has created by winning. Victories get polluted when your personal integrity is compromised. Nobody actually wins in this scenario and the backlash can be horrible. Make sure you are paying attention to the whole picture. Broaden your vision and honor your principles. It will pay off in the long run. And the meaning words are a tenuous victory, short-sightedness, profit at other's expense, manipulation. Stressful card actually. I think that the image of this card is what is most striking and powerful to me. This guy who has this victory but it is tenuous, it is kind of shaky and could fall away at any moment and there's two shadowed figures in the back. The idea of having this victory be tainted because you've maybe sacrificed other people or you haven't you haven't followed your own values or your own ideas um it's it it spoils it all it taints it all so i was thinking about like how important collaboration is how important it is right now for us to all work together so that our victories aren't just for a few, it's for all of us. And obviously I'm thinking about the virus and staying home, how important it is that we all work together, how important it is that we are able to fight this together and feel like we're part of a community. And the book that came to mind for this was The Hunger Games, which is such a funny pick in a couple of ways. Like most of us have read this book. It doesn't need any more shouting about, like it's a big book. But I just finished rereading this book for the first time in years. Like honestly, I think in a decade because I don't remember rereading it really since the first time that I read it. But oh my God, this book is so good. I think I've been conflating my opinions on this series with my opinions of the movie series, which I liked the first movie, sure. I thought the second movie was fine. I didn't, I, like, actively didn't like the Mockingjay films. So 
I, the whole Hunger Games series got a little bit tainted for me, I guess, to use that word. Um, but I wanted to reread the series because the prequel is coming out and also it's just been so long since I read it. So I picked it up and I always have thought of the series as strong and good, but not like a favorite. But rereading this book, wow, it is excellent. If you have not reread this book in a while, I really recommend that you do. I have not read a book in so long that had such an exciting plot. Like the characterization is outstanding. Like I was super surprised at how well crafted Katniss is and all of the other characters around her, how much we learn about her backstory, how much we learn about her current conditions, etc. How well like crafted the world building is and everything, but also just how exciting the plot is. It is stimulating. You, I didn't want to put it down. Like I almost couldn't put it down. Every time I put it down, I'd like go and do a different task and then I'd just come right back and pick it back up. But the reason that I wanted to pick it for this uh, card more than just like, I just recently read it and really recommend it. The reason that it came into my mind was because it's about a competition where nobody wins. It's about this horrible manipulation from the government to Katniss and like a weaker group of people, the districts that are under like a lot of oppression from this dystopian government um, and how every year they're forced to participate in these games where no one really wins. Yeah, there is a winner, but at what cost? And it at the end of, I'm not, I guess I won't spoil it, but... It's kind of, everyone knows how it ends, but you know, at the end, the way that Katniss wins is kind of a, uh, a, like a bit of a rebellion against the government. And it puts into play kind of like, how do you win something while still keeping your dignity and while still trying to be yourself and to... I don't know, to do the best that you can for others too. I think Katniss goes into these games very much thinking like, I just have to win it for me and I just need to survive and I probably won't, but I'm going to try. And if I win, at least then my family will be okay. But the farther we get into this book and, and especially the farther we get into the series, Katniss realizes like this problem is a lot bigger than just her surviving. It's about taking care of each other, about um, like groups that really need people's help that are vulnerable for whatever reason, whether it's in this series or in the real world. And it's about like winning with dignity and with collaboration. So I think it fits really well for this card. And I also just, I just really liked rereading it. <laughs> So those were my recommendations based on my tarot card reading. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I would love to hear if you did. I'd love to hear what card you picked, how you feel that my recommendation matched up, or what book you might recommend for the card that you picked, um, or how you feel that that card fits into your current situation, because... That's the fun of tarot. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much to everyone who's supporting me on Patreon right now. I am trying my hardest to make extra videos during these stressful times so that you guys have something to watch and distract you. And I really appreciate all of the people over on Patreon who are helping me out. So thank you to them. Thank you to you for watching. And I'll see you guys in my next video. <laughs> Bye.